So me would have like one somebody in the comment section if you tell me why Juliet Wallinis a behave like how she a behave on the stage. Why she had dash herself so and a show off on Rhoda Crawford like say and Rhoda Crawford did uh, but me not understand why like, go on a Jamaican liar party you know. I don't understand what is going on inside of the Jamaican liar party because me not understand why Juliet Holiness behaving like that on the stage. I don't understand. And it is very, 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 very unprofessional. It is unprofessional and it is a national disgrace the way how we see Juliet Holiness behave on that stage. Trust me, people. What do you think? Let me know down below, people. Now, uh, bless up to my viewers and my subscribers. Eh? Me hope everybody have been a blessed and a wonderful evening. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, always put God first. In every uh, any situation, just always remember to call upon God. Always remember to pray. Because a prayer day, keep the devil away. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, we have a lot coming up inside this update, including Daryl Vaz interview now mark golden continue to step on your toe people we have all of that coming up inside this update so you definitely don't want to miss none remember to watch the vlog until the end and leave a like on this video all right we soon come back So welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers them. Big up to all of my viewers, big up to all of my subscribers them. We continually support the channel and help the channel for grow. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you are new viewers, first time on my channel, then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell so whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. Share the content with a friend, a family, a loved one. Share it on your social media platform. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, remember, we are on our way to 100k subscribers. So if you're not subscribed yet, now is the right time for you to do so. Subscribe now and turn on the post notification bell. All right, now people, we are gonna start off this report. The Jamaican Liar Party supporters are calling on their leader, Andrew Wallace, to hurry up and call a by election over there in Chilani, um, Southern Chilani, and also over there in St. Thomas. They said that Mark Golding are now under pressure with his uh, dual citizenship, and now is the right time to attack Mark Golding because Mark Golding. Give them a piece of whopping in the by election. Now, people, check out what he had to say. People. You have to for the election. And you even have to say, oh, can you give by election where there is no vacancy? Mm -hmm. But President Chilani, Mr. Hughes, I don't even remember to tell about uh, Mitch Spielberg. Yes, that there is, is a vacancy there. Yes, and, and what, Mr. Hughes, and yesterday when I, when, when I see the, the five 
You know, so to be honest, me not wrong you, you know. I don't want to wrong you a bit. Me want you hurry up and tell him if he call the by-election. But I not really the by-election, I want you to tell him if he call, you know. Even though, me want Paul Patmore, get a one day, anybody where they come down and Saddam Chilani. A piece of beaten. So call it by election and Joe. Call it so the people them can get fi whip up anybody while you send good on a southern Chilani. Me you say you send Rhoda Crawford good on there. But listen, even down a southern Chilani, him still I go get a piece of, or should I say she, I go still get a piece of whipping because the people them tired and fed up of you and your dictatorship. But say all the people I'm telling you. And them I tell me if you tell yourself, if you hurry up and call the general election so they can vote you out. Them say them will want to vote you out. So call it Andrew. Call it. Mr. Bramwell. Hurry up and call the general election so the people of Jamaica can hurry up and just vote you out and done because them fed up and then tired of you and the people they must struggle, they must suffer, cost of living are so high and them say you are a criminal because you are a part of the illicit six. So call it for them. That is what they are saying. Not me, but them. Well, me I say to call it and just call it. So, when your supporters, they're going to tell us if you call um, by election. We don't really want you call a by election neither. You know? We want you call the general election. Even though we want Paul Patmore whip up anybody where you send on a southern Chilani. Now, Darrell Valls decides to him a campaign for Mark Golding name and the dual citizenship because. That will Vals have so many bad minds stuck up in their face. And we have bad mind them stuck up in that will Vals face. You can't see it twist up. And you, you just say, joke him, joke him, joke him, so in their face. Darrell Vals, your bad mind now go work. But people, check out what Darrell Vals had to say, people. <laughs> and what were you up to in the parliament this afternoon? When you oh, played, I, well, when I you had played one, that? I, I had one of the best, I had one of the best days in parliament in recent times. 
I've never seen an opposition. Tell us what you did. What did you do? Well, first of all, uh, uh, the, the Minister of Legal and Constitutional uh, uh, was, was speaking in the sectoral. And of course, what she was doing is giving an update on the Constitutional Reform Committee and its activities since its inception. And the first thing I did was to recommend to the opposition leader that he take leave of the house and go in the conference room and watch it on TV until such time as we were concluded. And I must tell you, to see him squirm in the parliament and his colleagues unable to defend him was, 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 was something else. It was one of the best of parliament. But I heard you also played the... Uh, uh, what did he do, Shepard? I played, I played the, the, the UK anthem during, her, during one aspect of her, her speech uh, and, and, and basically showed him a picture in the video of King Charles. Uh, for which he didn't look up. But the truth of the matter, there's a lot more to come on that clip. I won't say any more now, but I feel strongly that this matter that has been going on for six weeks, taking him four weeks to admit and admit after coming under immense pressure and his excuses, his deceit, and his just absolute bad handling of the situation. Have you ruled out taking pursuing legal action in the courts? Absolutely not. Anybody in the window that knows that well knows that when I feel strongly about something, I am not going to stop and I go to the end to get. So have you engaged the lawyers? The result. I've had several persons that have consulted me, contacted me. I've had persons from the private sector. I've had persons from within the own PNP that has called me to say, please don't, don't don't, don't ease up. Well, you haven't answered my question. Have you engaged lawyers to prepare legal engaged, action? I have not engaged lawyers because I do my homework and my research first. I'm in consultation with my party because I'm a member of a party, but I'm also an individual in my own right. And the truth of the matter is that I've had several discussions, including persons who have taken me to court and were successful in the whole U.S. citizenship case back in 2008. Persons who took you to court? That's right. That's, that sounds like Mr. Dadu. One, 100%. Correct. Along, along with my king's counsel, who defended me greatly and allowed me to get to get my election rather than just be turned over automatically, uh, king's counsel, Ransom Graham, who is my stated attorney from 2008 and several others. Okay. So in, in interesting times ahead. The only thing I'll leave you with Cliff is to find out what could be so important for him to be reluctant at this point of making a public statement in relation to his position as to whether he's going to renounce or not. And if he's not going to renounce, what would be the reason why he would not want to renounce with his ambitions to become the number one. Mr. Vaz, Darren Vaz is the Minister of Transport and also the Member of Parliament for West Portland. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Listen out. Listen out for what? Time will tell. Oh. Thank <laughs> you, Mr. Vaz. Now, Darrell Vaz. Who could have possible in a them right sense and believe anything at all that you are saying? Darrell Vaz is just a big, big liar. Where I don't know who could have ever in a them right mind and believe nothing at all what you are saying. Remember the other day when you came out and you speak about Mark Golden dual citizenship and you said that someone from the PNP told you about it and that was a lie. That was a big, big lie. Now you came back and you said that. Um, the blue that poll is saying that 64% of Jamaican people saying that um, Mark Golden should renounce his British citizenship. When you knew that, it is a lie. Because Dan Anderson come out and him speak out against it and him said you should stop telling lie about him. So... I don't understand what they go on Darrell Vaz. 
It's like every corner you turn, you get joked because you have played a liar game. You're too liar. You come like your leader. All I want just get up and tell a pure lie to the people of Jamaica. And then, Uno say, Uno want to go back in a power. The time you take a, 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 a aunt, Mark Golin, why you don't take the time out to tell your leader, tell Andrew Wallace, if 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 um announce the six criminals them were in a parliament and reveal his asset why you don't do that dear jamaicans so daryl vaz has finally been exposed in his lie when he has been claiming all along that inside sources of the pnp has been feeding him information well, Don Anderson, in a letter to the editor today, has called out this lie. Mr. Vaz, in a Twitter post, claimed that inside sources of the PNP told him that Don Anderson had conducted a poll recently on the behalf of the PNP asking about the impact of Mark Golding's dual citizenship on people's voting pattern if they plan to if it would affect how his their perception of him well none other than mr anderson himself through a letter written to the editor of the gleaner has rubbish that claim what this has done is showed daryl vaz up for exactly what he is a blasted liar so when him come out and claims him inside pnp source give him information about mark golden's personal data was that also a lie? Wanna tell me what Una think? Because clearly, this inside source in the PNP is a figment of Daryl Vaz's imagination. His overactive imagination, which is dead set on getting Mark Golden down. No matter what, no matter what base level he has to go to. It says more about you, Mr. Vaz, than anything that Mr. Mark Golding has ever done. It shows how desperate and depraved you are. But I am not surprised. That's why Juliet Olness said all I want is termite. And like termites, you should be digging in your little corners. Because you destroy everything you touch just like termite. Eat wood and destroy things. That's what I'm going to do. What I cannot understand, I fail to understand, is how on a boss and brag so. Say Mark Golden is the best thing that could happen to GLP. Find every name theme, and yet you are going to this desperate extent to try and eliminate Mark Golden as competition. Something now add up, Daryl. Something now add up. But Dan Anderson has exposed you for what you are. A sick, sorry, sad excuse of a human being who lies to get what he wants. You are so base. So low. Personally, I'm not surprised. You're that one championite that is just a disgrace to the school. I can't, I honestly cannot understand how you did go champion. You must have been outside behind the classroom and you never, attend, you never attended one single class. Can one championite can't do so. You're so done, it's painful. Anyway, that's all I have to say. When you take care of yourself, have yourself a great day. Now, Darrell Vaz, instead of you worry about, instead of you worry about how you're going to solve out the problem with the taxi man, them, you're there worrying about Mark Golden, dual citizenship, a bad mind. Bad mind, a joke out of you, them. Bad mind, a kill you, Darrell Vaz, because you lose your US citizenship. So that's why you are. You 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 are you are you are trying to target Mark Golden now, like say Mark Golden name your white fall. Target the fact that the taxi man them are uncomfortable with you, and not just the taxi man them, but the way how you are rob poor people with the tickets, the price of the tickets. You and your okay, criminal so I've just prime minister. I've do better than one other man. Sure. of the Road Traffic Act 2022. I had to read it because I saw a few weeks ago a gentleman made a post showing a ticket, a $10,000 ticket that he got for having his, his fog lamps on during the day. So I had to go and read that section that deals with fog lamps. And indeed, it does say that the fog lamp should not be used except when there is fog, there is rain, mist, whatever, low visibility on a whole. Right? 
So if you have it on in the day where the sun is bright and rare, you are, you are committing an offense. But it brings me to the point now of asking what is the purpose of that? Because as far as I know and what was explained was that the road traffic act, the new one, was supposed to reduce road traffic crashes and road fatalities. People have been questioning it from the get-go, that it's insane, it's a money-making venture, and, and it has been vehemently denied. But it, it continues to show that that is exactly what it is, because I cannot see for the life of me our fog lamp which by the, by the same road traffic act should not be brighter than your headlamp. It should be, it should be of a lower, a lower beam than your headlamp. So how a fog lamp in a day can cause an accident or contribute to the causing of an accident? Somebody explain to me. Because I may not understand it. Why should it be an offense? The vehicles that are being made today are being made with fog lamps and daytime, daytime running lamps, DRL, and all of them something there. Right? And the DRL them, once the switch on the vehicle does come on and they remain on until the vehicle switch off. Now, for, for some vehicles, they can't turn off. Because my, my DRL can't turn off if me activate the auto beam. We, we, our lights turn off and they only come on in a low visibility. So the DRL, then some vehicles can turn off. But me not turn off my own. I make it stay there because that's what it's supposed to be for. Daytime running lights supposed to be on during the day. So I can't understand. And the same road traffic act in another section, I don't remember that section now, right? Where I read that as at, as at the end of this year, 2024, no vehicles will be allowed to be imported unless they are fitted with daytime running lights. Then the daytime running light is, is for me is 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 is, is of no less a distraction or no greater distraction than, than the fog lamp. Because the daytime running lamps are for the most part those those semicircular lamps that you see around the headlamp, right? And for some vehicles it is inside the headlamp and and and, and, and thing. But 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 those are the lights that they call daytime running lights. You understand? So those constantly remain on. And so my daytime running light them bright too. So I don't understand the whole the whole thing about it. You can drive with daytime running lamp, but you can't drive with fog lamp. I mean, see people are driving with headlamp on to some probably I forgot to read now about the headlamp. Because if you, if you can't get ticket for drive with, 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 with fog lamp on, then it should be illegal to drive with your headlight on too. I'm going to research that part there and come back and tell you where I'm going. But this sounds like I just want one bag of bullshit to me. You understand? We, 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 we are focused on the wrong things then. We are major in the minor. We are major in the mind and it just tell me that the road traffic act was never in, ever intended for the purpose that they say to reduce road, road traffic crashes and road fatalities. That was never the intent based on what I am seeing in the act. Based $10,000 just for a, a, a fog lamp, having a fog lamp in the day. How does a fog lamp contribute or causes an accident? Somebody tell me, because I'm, 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 right now I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm educate me there. Please and thanks. As far as I know, I know that Darrell Valls need to resign. Andrew Wallace need to resign. Juliet Wallace need to resign. Tough Time need to resign. Malahu Fort need to resign. Rhoda Crawford need to resign. And the old Jamaican Labour Party need to resign. Because... They are a wicked set of people. They mean the Jamaican people no good. And I think they should resign. They are a bunch of devil. All of them inside of the Jamaican Labour Party need to resign. Them, he, he, uh, by, 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 as a matter of fact, the party needs to scrap and them get a different party. Because I don't see the party serve no purpose. Because if them so wicked from back then, and they are still wicked, still wicked, to the people of Jamaica, that means uh, they not serve no purpose. So I think the Jamaican people should call and all of them to just go. Scrap them party. We can't, we can't bother with the green people them no more. They are too wicked. Them too wicked, brother. And we tear that them. But people, check out this video. Councillor, Mario Mitchell of the Belfield Division. 
Ah, oh, that they come is on the platform. Workers and warriors of the Alligator Fan Division. And any other comrades who are here, no respect. The word is love. Comrades, I to be here tonight, you know, because when I see TJ come in as a young youth, as a young teacher, and step forward under the banner of the People's National Party to take his place in the Manchester Municipal Corporation, I say, yeah, man, that is the kind of People's National Party we want. Can it come in through? I say, yes, I'm going to be here to support. Pick up, PJ, pick up. And comrades, I want to thank each and every one of you. An economy that is not so vulnerable. Right now, we're totally dependent on remittances from abroad and from tourism. But what about agriculture? We have some of the best food in the world. Some of the best yam. Some of the best clean. Best onion. Best cocoa. Best ganja in the world. We need to support the farmers. We need a robust policy to ensure that our farmers have good farm roads, have storage facilities when there's an oversupply so they can keep them product and sell it when the price comes up back. We need an irrigation systems and where we have irrigation systems, we need to ensure the farmers have water. I was in Sacramento the other day and I've talked to some farmers and I'm saying how much money they have to spend to get the water every week, taking all of the profit out of them farming. That can't work. And the Minister of Agriculture is there in peace. What is he doing? So I'm going to take it outside and set up on a whole brick wall, like 1930. But that is my name, I'm in the time there, I'm going to finish the street, and let the fire run, and they can't stop it. And then after that, comrades, Dan and Snow up the wall, and show us what we done, and we are it now, 8% ahead. And then start it. Even more worried, man. And so, comrades, this is them strategy, though. This is what's going on. They're not trying to do anything they can do to distract the maker. They call me that kind of foolishness. But we are not focusing on that. If they say certain things and disrespect me and my wife, my Empress Sandra, you will say, they now have a soya. They now have a soya. reform program which Michael Manley started in the 1970s. Michael was so prescient about this that in 1977 he established a division in the Ministry of Justice which was directly responsible for constitutional reform. And persons like this, myself who um, had just left high school, I think. I can't remember saying exactly when I left, <laughs> simply because I prefer not to go back so far in my memory. Uh, we were part of a team of persons who went out and started meeting with groups in church halls and school rooms, and anywhere we could find people to engage them in this discourse. And it was perhaps the most enriching period in my life. Because people will say, oh, People don't know what they want. People don't even understand what a constitution is. People are uninformed and they are illiterate. And all of that could be true, but people know what they want. Mm -hmm. They know how they want to be governed. They know what they want to enrich their lives. Well, it's, it's, it's almost dramatic when you consider that after all this time, we are nowhere because we're, we, the, the, most significant, um, the most significant amendment, I think, to the Constitution since then was actually the Charter of Rights.